Hello there, I'm the Beast Manager and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Now, today we can see that N Nails has just delivered the ice resin to the uh, control pod. Um, she is coming back to do some other tasks that uh, we have uh, still to do around this uh, planet. Nothing much, we just have a few uh, building orders left just so that we can have a uh, toilet in here so that uh, future visitors have a place to go. Uh, we could harvest this, but uh, I don't think... Really, you have time to disinfect things, but you don't have the time to... Um... Is there a way for me to uh... tell you not to disinfect things? Yeah, this is global. And uh, I don't want that affecting... <sighs> what? This was not here last week. Okay. Uh... There is a... Uh, okay, maybe that it was and I didn't uh, realize this is probably Otto's tears. But um, in any case, let's get back to the objective of this uh, episode. In this episode, uh, I have the objective of at least trying to get this kick started and uh, this up and rolling. This is our nuclear waste uh, processing facility. Uh, unfortunately, over the hundred of cycles that we had our nuclear reactor running, uh, we had accumulated quite a lot of nuclear waste. Uh, I had prepared a secondary um, waste pit for us to put put the um, nuclear waste in, but uh, instead of just polluting the entire world with nuclear waste, why not treat it in um, control fashion and uh, make sure that uh, it just occupies a tiny little bit of space and uh, doesn't cause us any problems in the future because cleaning up nuclear spillage is really annoying because um, as you can see there is still a droplet of nuclear waste that I've been trying to clean it up but uh, they clean up the nuclear waste it turns into a bottle and then it starts spilling out uh, nuclear waste once again so it's really difficult to uh, get rid of it uh, once it gets into your world so uh, how about we make sure that we don't have to deal with it uh, that often. Now, um, this chamber is almost operational. As we can see in the pipes, if the game doesn't crash, thank you game, uh, all the pipes are already full with the super coolant. We are going to use the best materials that we have available to us uh, in this recycling uh, or processing chamber. Most of the stuff in here is made out of thermion or tungsten, even though uh, this chamber is never going to achieve such temperatures. It's just that uh, at a time, thermium was more uh, plentiful than, than steel. And uh, yeah, uh, I think this is uh, a structure that deserves such materials. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we have the super coolant running in the pipes. Uh, the super coolant is going to steal the heat from the nuclear waste and um, uh, transport it, it into the steam chamber. That way we can uh, reduce the temperature of the nuclear waste gradually and um, salvage a little bit of electricity out of the um, out of it. Um, at the same time, the uh, liquid pump over here it's going to pump the nuclear waste all the way over into this cooling chamber, a very tiny chamber that is going to be controlled with hydro sensors. These sensors are going to request Yep, a tiny little amount of uh, nuclear waste. Nuclear waste uh, piles up up to uh, a thousand kilos, um, but we are going to request 500 kilos uh, so that um, the rest that remains in the pipe um, has a place to flow. These tiles are super cold, extremely cold. Uh, this temperature should be cold enough to instantaneously transform the nuclear waste into its solid state. At that point, the auto sweeper will remove it from the in here and it will put it over here into this tiny little chamber where it should remain cold forever. And now that I look at it at this thing, I think that I'm missing one critical component. Wait, I can't build that in there? Of course not. The sweeper is in the way. Hmm, I will have to uh, increase the height of this chamber a little bit. That's fine. I should probably deconstruct... Nah, I will deconstruct this later. I just need to uh, deconstruct a few tiles over there. And I can do that easily. Because I want to put a... Um, 
a, a robo miner in here just in case a solid block of nuclear waste forms and that way we don't have to break into this chamber to deal with that the uh, robo miner will make sure that um, uh, that block is turned into pieces and the auto sweeper will then remove uh, the debris into the uh, proper storing, cha uh, storing chamber. Now the only critical thing that I can see happening is if our cooling system fails and if for some reason the temperature in here starts to bleed into the um, cooling chamber which I find that very hard because it is insulated tiles and eventually all this solid nuclear waste turns into liquid. I'm pretty sure something Terrible would happen then, but we are not going to think about that. Okay, so auto and nails are finished with all of the buildings that were left in here. I'm already putting a little bit of polluted water into the system to be turned into uh, regular water, of course, so that uh, everything is primed. That way, anytime a dupe tries to use the system, uh, it will be already complete. No, don't mess with that. Uh, you guys, I can take care of this uh, from now. I will use the uh, disconnect tools. Uh, you, however, uh, are ready to go. The tree will not be uh, uh, able to produce NZ any resin uh, anytime soon. So, I mean, you're not doing anything in here and you have better things to do uh, back home. So, let's change the destination. Select Equazon. This is a petroleum. Um, petroleum engine with liquid oxidizer, which means you will land platform 165. Let's go over here. 165. Is everybody aboard? Uh, not yet. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let me just double check that the ISO resin it is inside. Uh, that's the most valuable thing that we came uh, to get, I'm st I don't think we are going to use it this episode, but uh, soon we shall make use of it. I uh, just want to get the nuclear waste processing facility up and rolling first, and new puff prints, puff prints uh, might just get a little bit toasted on, but uh, that just means that you will be more delicious. And here we go. Now, unfortunately, the fish, the, not the fish, the pri prince did not uh, meet his maker. Now, <clears throat> uh, one of the uh, major complications that I notice is that uh, I have to get inside of this place. It's not gonna, gonna be that easy because I have to make a liquid lock somewhere and I don't want to ruin this uh, beautiful atmosphere that I made for myself, nor the vacuum uh, for, for that matter, so... I don't know, I will have to make it over here, which means I will have to deconstruct a little bit of this system. Hmm. Okay, so uh, the liquid lock will be uh, placed in here. Uh, unfortunately, inside of this uh, septic tank, uh, we have plenty of different fluids. We don't, uh, we don't have only the nuclear waste, we also have part of the n liquid sulfur resulting from the... Uh, <laughs> our nuclear accident when we first started the reactor and a little bit of crude oil that I have no idea how it got in here. So I'm just going to put a, a liquid filter over here. Uh, these fluids will be piped into our uh, secondary uh, septic tank. In here it is super cold which means that these fluids should cool off into a uh, stable um, a situ is stable temperature and because we don't want this for anything they can just stay in here with the rest of the uh, uh, garbage that we uh, left behind uh, if we want to uh, clean it up in the future it is a possibility but uh, right now away from my away from mine right uh, and the uh, nuclear waste will be piped uh, through the uh, already uh, existing pipes I just need to build myself like uh, one small pipe over there I cut this one out and uh, ship it off um, to the pipe that uh, leads to the uh, processing chamber over there. So um, yeah, it's just a matter of filling up that uh, thingy and bringing some power down. That would also be quite helpful, you know. I heard that uh, buildings enjoy being powered up. Uh, we can ignore that overload, uh, overload uh, warning. 
uh, surely the line would overload if everything was uh, turned on, but uh, most of the stuff it is not turned on, so uh, it will be fine. Alright, so with the liquid lock achieved, let's break into the steam chamber and start uh, building the uh, small amount of machiner machinery that we need to build in here, and soon we should start shipping out uh, some nuclear waste into uh, our processing uh, chamber, and we'll be uh, and we'll be able to see these in action. Uh, hopefully everything will work as intended, but uh, as uh, often, uh, I'm pretty sure it won't. Oh, also, uh, we achieved a partial vacuum uh, in here. There is still uh, a little bit of uh, carbon dioxide here and there, but the vacuum is starting to spread out, and soon this will be a complete vacuum. Um, I am unsure on how the uh, mechanics, uh, mechanics of vacuum uh, truly um, uh, take place, but from uh, what I can understand, when a vacuum is achieved, uh, um, it tends to start uh, nibbling away at the uh, remaining gases, as long as they are really, really low, as we can see, and they just start uh, being deleted by the game, and soon a full vacuum is... Um, achieved. Now how the game does calculate this and stop itself from uh, deleting everything inside of the game itself, I have no idea, but uh, oh well, at least for this moment it is serving our pur purpose. Which means that we can deconstruct this and this, please, and let's do this rather quickly. Okay, let's turn this into a priority 7. Just to make absolutely certain that uh, everything is deconstructed and uh, cleaned up, so we can uh, close this chamber and um, make sure that a vacuum stays in here forever, because I want to pressurize this area uh, around the, the reactor, uh, so that our dupes have a uh, stable atmosphere from... Um, you know, f for them to breathe while they change for from the Atmos suits into the uh, lead suits. And... Uh, do we have a vacuum? Mm, we are close to it. The nuclear building crew is uh, really busy. I wonder the um, uh, what goes through their mind while they are doing such perilous job. But um, oh well, the most important part of their job is about to be done. The uh, waiting has finally. Um, aside it is now over we can finally seal off the uh, waste uh, chamber and um, well turn on the reactor well not really turn on the reactor we still have a lot of machinery to deconstruct but uh, uh, the biggest part of the wait is now over um, all of that was to make sure that we had a full vacuum inside of this facility. We required the full vacuum because both the steam chamber and the waste chamber need to be in a vacuum uh, for them to uh, work properly and not have a bunch of temperature bleed all over my base. Uh, I'm pretty sure vacuum is paramount on these kinds of situations. Now all we need to do is uh, uh, plug off these holes that I made for the um, gases to flow uh, more freely. Um, and start deconstructing a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, the not so fun part about uh, having to build these kinds of things because now I must determine which kinds of which pipes are needed and which pipes are not. So many deconstruction orders. Uh, good thing is that deconstructing is faster than construct constructing. Okay, so Otto and Nils have arrived. Um, uh, a good thing to do now is to put everything in grounded and change the crew to all. That way your dupes will take care of everything. You just should remember to um, put your storage modules uh, or storage buildings uh, on uncontrolled so that your dupes can resupply your ship uh, while they are... Um, uh, while the ship is in... Um, uh, in your planet, otherwise uh, things might not uh, get inside the containers. Uh, now, I need a place to uh, store this very precious uh, cargo. Because uh, some areas of my base are not exactly uh, adequate for it, but I'm pretty sure my forge area... Yeah, the forge area is just fine. Uh, for now I'm just going to build a um, storage bin over here, 
uh, to have the Ives of Resin close to the Molecular Forge. And now let's just see what do I need to make Visco Gel. Petroleum, we have that, and Resin. Uh, I could also make uh, Isolation, but I don't think uh, Isolation is a, a good idea. Because uh, if we take a look at the insulated tile, it takes 400 materials and we would be getting only 100 materials out of that. Yeah, nope. Nope, the uh, ceramic or ingenious rock is good enough. I kind of want this viscal gel. Okay, so it is time to start priming the systems. I'm already building the uh, place where we are going to put the super coolant to um, pump it into the system. I also have the uh, oxygen thingy almost built, right? Yep. Just one tile remaining. And... Uh, Oh, suits, yeah, that reminds me. I should start building me a couple extra suits because we are going to use them. So we are going to use six suits um, of each, so at least we need that more. Let's go... let's make them out of cobalt. I'm gonna need at least six more, plus the two extra for the bin. Uh, plus two extra, because why not? And for lead suits, once again... At least six suits, two extra for the bin, and two extra to keep around. Because I don't think I have that many suits. I was checking out earlier, and uh, my suit situation is actually quite um, quite low. I thought I had built uh, more than that, but um, oh well, we can always build more. We have the materials, so that's not a big problem. Uh, so other than that, in here... Uh, this is already uh, built as well, so let's start pumping out a couple of uh, nuclear waste uh, packets into our processing station. I will want nuclear waste, thank you. You go there. You go... there. Pause the game before bad things happen, and you go there, right? Let's just observe for a moment. And you're not going there, because this is not connected. I built there a... Uh, a regular pipe, but that's okay. Uh, that's a hot area anyway, so... Uh, that's fine. I just built this off regular pipes to save up on uh, ceramic. Uh, everything else seems to be connected. So we should start chipping out uh, these nuclear waste soon. Okay, so we have... Um, a little bit of nuclear waste starting to accumulate in our processing chamber over here. Let's just take a look at the piping. Yes. Now I have the system turned off. I want a little bit of nuclear waste to start accumulating so that we can uh, start siphoning off the temperature um, to produce power over here. Uh, I don't want to uh, start the system just yet. Uh, we still have a bunch of nuclear waste to uh, pump out there, so uh, we can wait a little bit. While we wait, I'm doing some improvements and finishing up the cleaning up um, the cleaning uh, effort on our nuclear reactor. Uh, because, you know, I really like uh, uh, automation in this game. Uh, I don't know why, just uh, little sounds and lights all over the place. Uh, I find that pleasing. So I just f uh, just thought to myself, how could I uh, put a little bit of automation in here and improve the lives uh, of our dupes? Well, I just built myself a couple of motion sensors, which are not yet complete, because uh, I need to finish uh, the construction from this side all the way over here, because the second I start putting blocks in here, I will block the path of our dupes. And, uh, well, I need to wait for them to finish this part over here. But these motion detectors will uh, detect if a dupe is working in a diamond press. They will send a signal to a light to provide a little bit of lighting in their working environment. Uh, this is dangerous, dangerous uh, stuff that they are dealing with, uh, so um, safety is always a good measure. 
Uh, also, and probably most important, I am going to build a radiation detector over here connected to an automated notifier. This radiation detector will detect uh, if a bolt has traveled through, through all of our diamond presses and uh, have collided with the um, wall. Uh, that means that we are producing more red bolts than we need and uh, we are wasting well, essentially, essentially, we are wasting power uh, in doing so. So that will let me know so that I can turn off the system. Uh, you could technically automate this uh, by sending a, a signal to uh, turn this off. But I rather do it manually because I uh, have a feeling that uh, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen only once or twice. So uh, there's no need to make things uh, extremely complicated. And um, yeah... Okay, so now that this is done, let's start building ourselves uh, these blocks. Uh, I still have to wait a little bit of time. Uh, this nuclear waste is taking its uh, sweet time, coming all, all the way from our uh, deposit over here. Hmm. Let me see, how much temperature are we uh, losing? We are shipping at uh, 173. And if the game doesn't crash, we are getting... Okay, we are not losing a single... Maybe a few bits of uh, temperature, but nothing nothing out of the ordinary. We are not going to cook the entire area uh, with the nuclear waste. And we should not have any spillages uh, coming out of the pipes, hopefully. And uh, yeah, soon we'll be able to see if this actually works. Okay, so we have super coolant being pumped into the system. The oxygen is already inside, so let's pressurize the entire area but before we do it let me just double check everything seems to be um, closed off we'll be depending on this uh, small piece of petroleum to keep the uh, uh, two chambers separated hopefully uh, it will not leak a lot of temperature through here uh, it's not going to be pretty uh, but I'm pretty sure I built the uh, the cooling system yep yeah. Thinking about that, there is a little bit of a radiant pipe over here just to take care of that extra little bit of uh, temperature that should leak through there. Uh, so with that in mind, and given that everything is closed off, I am having all of this care because it took me near, near close to 200 cycles, I think. No. Well, it took me over 16 hours. How many cycles that is? Uh, 16 hours in real game, in real lifetime, just to vacuum this thing. Uh, so I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> but uh, we need to pressurize this if we want to move uh, to the next st stage of the uh, build, which is to build the Atmo docks, allowing our dupes to uh, exchange their uh, working attire to protect themselves better against the hazards of radiation and finishing up this part but this part is not uh, dependent on the reactor being on and off so we can move on into other things this is just a decoration project more than anything else we are now starting to request the uh, Atmo suits that we have built a while back uh, they are probably gonna take a little while and now Atmos suit docks, I always want them to be at level 9, just in case the um, dupe uh, drops a worn suit, uh, that suit gets replaced ASAP, because otherwise they can get trapped uh, inside of this chamber, and that is not a good thing to happen. That's why I have these two bins over here with at least two suits inside, yep. We already have the emergency suits. Uh, that way there is always a suit available uh, for the dupe to use. And that means that we should start thinking about putting a little bit of water inside of the uh, steam chamber to receive the first drop of uh, super, um, uh, super heated water and uh, nuclear waste. For that we are going to connect this pipe over here. And over here, let's start pumping out a little bit of water. Oh, I am an idiot. I requested suits over here. Oh, I'm so stupid. We want these uh, dogs to be um, unsuited because uh, these will receive the suits from the dupes from the outside. Oh, what a mess. These ones are to be left um, alone. These ones are the ones that require the suits. So, there is a small problem. I built all of the bridges uh, the wrong way. 
Ouch, oops, uh, this is going to put a small damper in our plans because now we have to deconstruct all of these and reconstruct them and uh, because my memory is really low, really that bad, I have to uh, keep jumping from uh, one view to the other. Hmm. A small issue, but uh, nothing too serious. So, while we wait for the uh, uh, suit docks to get filled with oxygen, I figure that we should do just a small test to see if this system really works. Uh, this area has already been cooled off to the proper temperature. Uh, all the pipes should be connected except for this one. I don't think that uh, there is a pipe missing. No, no there is. Okay. Just one pipe missing, and uh, after the, um, the the dupes build this pipe, I'm going to uh, do a small test to see um, how efficient uh, this system is at converting the uh, nuclear waste into um, its uh, object state. Okay, so let's do our first test. Let's set the automation to uh, its... Uh, nothing happened. Why? Oh, okay, there was the uh, buffer, so the pump is starting to uh, send the nuclear waste up. I had to open this chamber because I want to build the uh, rail through here. Uh, unfortunate that I had to open it up, but there is absolutely no problem. Um, it was just uh, that the temperature in here was uh, somewhat under control, but uh, that's fine. We can lose a little bit as long as I make this very high priority, please just so that uh, no bad things happen. Um, okay, so the nuclear waste is uh, not turning into its solid state immediately. Okay, it might take a little while. Well, I have to admit it, I am impressed with the uh, capacity of the nuclear waste to um, hold on to its heat. It's taking its sweet time for the super coolant to uh, siphon off all of that heat away from the... Um, like the... this is just... Uh, just over 1.1 tons of nuclear waste and it's taking us uh, so long and we have all of this plus all of this plus all of this and a little bit more of this to process. Uh, Okay, so I might have uh, overestimated the capacity of this facility to process the uh, nuclear waste, uh, but still, it's uh, something that uh, over time is uh, going to help, I'm most certain. Uh, let's just wait a little bit. The nuclear waste itself turns into solid. Okay, that was stupid. At 26.9 degrees. And we are at 76. We are a little bit away, but uh, with that time, we um, uh, have invested uh, on uh, finishing up the nuclear reactor. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to see this, the results of this uh, small experiment uh, at the same time that we turn on this reactor. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to do uh, in order to fill up the reactor number two is uh, I'm going to use a conveyor meter. I've never used uh, one of these before. This is the first time. But uh, as far as I can understand, if we go into this view, uh, well, not this view, I meant this view, we have a, um, a reset signal over here and we have an output signal over here. So. If I understand this correctly, the conveyor meter will allow 100 units of uh, whatever to pass uh, through it before it closes. And it will only reopen again once it receives a green signal. This green signal is going to be sent by this smart storage bin over here. That is going to... First I want to reduce this to like uh, 400 maybe. And, uh, yeah, it's going to... S no, wait. No, this is wrong. I need to make a small change over here. So if we send a green signal when it is full, it sends a red signal when it is empty. We need to turn that red signal into a green signal. So let me just do this really quickly before I forget and ruin this entire thing. There we go. 
Now, when the uh, uh, storage bin is empty, it should request some fuel. The fuel should arrive rather quickly, and uh, and everything should be fine after that. And, uh, by the way, I just uh, want to build this because I don't want to have uh, nuclear uh, fuel in the middle of my base, like stuck in, um, in a rail, like uh, we have to fill up this reactor over here, right? The fuel is stuck in the rail waiting to be consumed, uh, but in here is perfectly fine because the dupes are using the uh, uh, radiation suits. Over here, it is not. I don't want to have my fuel exposed for uh, a very long time. I want it to be shipped off and uh, stored in its proper uh, container. Okay, so I think I understand one of the comments that I got um, in the last video now. Uh, one of you guys suggested that using the nuclear waste as a uh, form of uh, storing power in the form of heat. Uh, because it's really good at uh, keeping up the uh, heat that I it has and uh, that can be seen by uh, by this because uh, this nuclear waste has been sitting in here for a little while now these are aluminum uh, metal tiles with uh, aluminum uh, radiant pipes behind them running super coolant through them uh, that's like the most uh, well not the most uh, aggressive thing we could have done, but uh, these are the best materials that we could have used for this and they, it, they are still ha uh, having a little bit of trouble uh, dealing with uh, just this tiny little amount of nuclear waste. Uh, so yeah, th there is still a lot of electricity that we can uh, generate uh, with this nuclear waste um, that we have over here. So I might uh, in the future, if I have um, the uh, manpower or the dupe power expand uh, into a second facility more specialized in um, siphoning off the heat from the nuclear waste uh, before we process it. Okay, so the fuel delivery system is on. Let's um, let's test it out. So this should be counting, I suppose. Are you counting or not? It says amount zero units. Amount remaining one hundred units. Hmm. Hmm. It's because it's getting a green signal constantly, it's resetting all the time. Hmm. What if I do this? Yep, mm -hmm. that's the problem. Okay, so we want to receive a pulse, not a uh, constant signal. Okay, I will have to figure that out. Oh, here we go, guys. Here we go. As I was thinking about how to create a pulse, uh, the nuclear waste is starting to form. However, this is not going over there. Why? Uh, probably because this is not set up. Mm, solid nuclear waste. Please pick that up, put it over there. Okay, okay, so at least we don't need to use the Robo Miner. That's unfortunate because we would get rid of half of it. But I discovered a flaw in my plan, and that flaw is the second we put some nuclear waste in here, it's going to eat up the uh, metal tiles and it's going to transform this nuclear solid waste, this solid nuclear waste, into liquid again. Which means we can only transform like 10 kilos at a time, at best. Well, not 10 kilos, but a very, very tiny amount. Um, I'm going to let this uh, reach a really low temperature. Uh, I'm going, in fact, to increase this to minus 30, just to make sure that we have a really low pr uh, temperature, uh, s just in case uh, that even a small amount is enough to raise this temperature a lot. And um, then we are going to try again. Okay, so everything is now operational. Nails is going to be the first to, to experiment with the new radiation suits, uh, because Nails is insisting on... Uh, <laughs> Tuning up this engine even though it is a priority level 1. I suppose there is nothing better to do. And if there is nothing better to do, that means that everything is up and rolling. And that means we can activate this reactor finally. Now, the final thing 
that is left to be done is connecting all the little wires that I left unconnected uh, for safety reasons and activating all of these buildings that once again I left deactivated for safety reasons. Now guys, my idea to create a pulse is rather simple. I'm going to use a filler, uh, filler uh, <coughs> gate and a reset point, a reset thingy, res uh, toggle memory. Uh, sorry guys, words today, not my friends. And uh, my idea here is, yep, it is working. So we send a green signal, that is going to send a green signal, uh, obviously. And that green signal is also going to uh, go through a filler gate that is uh, active to go for only one second. That filler gate will then reset the system, uh, creating in essentially a one second pulse. That's all that we uh, need to send, uh, let's see, six packets of uh, fuel, that's 120 kilos, so more than enough to keep the reactor rolling for a little while. And uh, now that we have power going, I should be able to start storing up the fuel in the smart storage. Yeah. Oh. oh, game, that... Why? Okay, that looks so freaking ugly. Can I... Is there a way for me to reset this? What? Okay, maybe if I... When I reload the game, uh, this thing will go away. But uh, in any case, now... Everything should be operational. Why... You are not? May I ask? Oh, because this is turned off. Okay. Alright, guys. So we are one connection away from having everything uh, rolling in this reactor. But I thought, let's go through the... Fi the... F oh my god. Why? Can I make it so that... Uh, I, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. It's quite simple. Dupes are not allowed inside of the reactor. There is nothing for you guys to do in, the, in here. So just, just, just get out. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. I thought uh, about making the final checks with you guys. So, automation-wise, I uh, ran through things, but uh, let's take a look. Uh, coolant temperature, let's remain at 20 degrees. I think that's a good temperature. Uh, reactor temperature, with that we get a warning, 270 degrees. Um, Judging by the fact that this one is running at, uh, has been running at 230 to 240 uh, degrees, I think that's a, a good temperature to be warned about uh, if our reactor um, reaches that temperature. It is because then the steam turbines will be generating a lot of heat and maybe there is a... Uh, Maybe we should take that into consideration and take a look at the reactor, right? Right, now, the liquid pump is turned off because we, do, we don't want this water to be pumped off. We, we want this water to be turned into steam. Uh, so that's how it is going to remain. Now, in near the hydro sensors for the nuclear waste refueling, it's going to be set at 500-500 because that means that we have a minimum layer of uh, nuclear waste over here to be constantly pumped uh, into this side of the reactor to keep the temperature uh, even. And um, once it's reached uh, 500 kilograms over here, which means that uh, this, stor this small storage is getting kind of full, maybe we should take uh, into consideration and take that out of the reactor so we, we don't uh, clog up the system. Uh, in here it is a similar system, 500-500 uh, or 100, it's now uh, let's increase that to the maximum amount of 900 kilograms, and I mean maximum amount because this stacks up to a thousand kilograms. And if we put a 200 kilo, uh, 2,000 kilograms, we are never going to get a green signal, and that would be bad. Uh, so that is that. This automation is also already uh, set in place, so uh, nothing to be worried about in that regard uh, yeah I think everything is uh, operational I don't think that uh, oh one final check is every single steam turbine connected yes they are 
as we established previously, five reactors um, will uh, fill up one line. Um, so we need a second a separated line for our six uh, reactor over here. Now we have an autosave, but uh, these five reactors will input the uh, major, uh, the biggest part of the water close to the reactor, so that. Um, you know, it absorbs the heat from the uh, nuclear waste pool over here. And this uh, small line over here, which is that just the uh, remaining um, water from the steam generator, will uh, keep the, the uh, steam pressure over here somewhat even. Uh, we know that uh, given the design of this chamber, the pressure will not be even. And that's why I only have one atmos sensor, uh, sensor um, because uh, sensing the pressure around the reactor is the most important part as long as there is uh, a few kilograms of pressure in this corner over here it will be fine there is more than enough steam for the steam turbine to operate okay so now I, f I feel like I have seen everything so let's connect the pipes and pray that everything uh, goes according to plan and uh, yeah, uh, these two vents are um, equipped with a small um, uh, emergency system should the pressure inside the chamber uh, reach a critical uh, point, which is uh, the maximum of uh, 20 kilograms. There is no more... Uh, uh, we cannot uh, give it a, a bigger number than this, which is unfortunate, but uh, if it reaches that pressure, it will close off the vents and the uh, remaining water will be pumped outside. Um, however, like the other reactor, this one should be a, a close uh, circuit. Um, the second we have uh, all the water that we need inside of the reactor, there, this um, automation system should never be necessary. But just as a safety precaution, uh, we'll keep it in here. Now let's just wait for the reactor to start running. Radiation wise, we are already producing a little bit of it. Let's see. You say how much you are absorbing? 340 uh, red volts per second. That's a good amount. And with all of these uh, generators, uh, they are set to go off at 500 red volts uh, because uh, that way we minimize the wastes uh, that we get for the travel that the red volt needs to do. And uh, this is only going to start going off once I press this button over here because uh, I want to wait a little bit before I, st I start uh, firing up things around here. Oh, we got a warning. Reactor, reactor pressure. Why? Do you sense uh, 20 kilograms of steam over here? How? Hmm. Let me take a look over here. We have 24 kilograms, and over here we have 15 kilograms. Okay, maybe this was not the best of ideas. I can move that sensor around a little bit. Uh, over here, center of chamber. Yeah, it's somewhere around here. So, let's give permission to our dupes to get in once again. And let's prioritize this as a level 9, and let's deconstruct this one as well, however, I should only deconstruct this, let's keep it uh, above, I should only deconstruct this one after this one is built, let's make an emergency out of this. I mean, truth be told, we only know if things are working or not after we turn them on, right? So a few mistakes are uh, bound to be expected on a system that took me, I don't know, maybe four episodes to build uh, over time. And I wasn't really paying too much attention when I was doing half of the stuff, but because I was focused on other pro projects. Uh, so, yeah. Suppose that is to be expected. Now please deconstruct this one, once again with the maximum urgency. Set to green when you are above... No, when you are below set pressure. Thank you. Oh, oh, we have some generators rolling. Let's take a look. Okay, so this water should um, come first. Um, the objective being that uh, the reactor should recycle the water it's using in the generators. 
uh, right any water that is not used by the reactor is then sent uh, to the steam chamber uh, to be turned into steam and if that is too much we'll then send outside now soon once all of the reactors start going they are not all going we should not be receiving any more water from the outside we should be um, consuming the same amount of water that then uh, we are producing so let's wait for that glorious moment to happen Okay, that glorious moment happened momentarily, but uh, there is steam not in. That is still not enough temperature to uh, keep the uh, last steam turbine rolling. But that could be changed if we go like this. We can start pumping the nuclear waste uh, through the. Um, uh, uh, circulation system that we built over here to keep the temperature even on this side of the uh, chamber so let's take care of that because clearly it's going to be important as we can see these reactors are already at uh, half uh, um, not really half but 30-40% uh, uh, production and this one is still uh, not able to turn on so uh, this might help and uh, well yeah, see, the second this uh, nuclear waste comes over here, immediately turns this part into steam and immediately gets that rolling. And this is actually important uh, to have this one rolling because uh, we need this reactor rolling to keep the uh, pressure inside the chamber even. Otherwise, we are not producing water and if we are not producing water from this steam turbine, we are definitely uh, getting water from the outside. Um, that is just a safe, uh, safety measure to make sure that the reactor um, is always fed up with water. Uh, but then that will mean that we will have to cycle the water outside. And that is going to be a little bit annoying. We don't want to uh, be um, um, sending this water outside. It's, uh, after all, radioactive. Not really, but uh, let's pretend that it, that it is. Uh, but apparently this will work uh, really nicely. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a uh, really hot nuclear waste. It has to work, otherwise uh, it uh, would be require for further improvement, but um, that is not the case. Everything is set and rolling. All the bu buttons are turned on except for these ones, but uh, there is no point in these ones are t uh, being on anyway, so I can say that uh, this is actually a success. I am really happy with uh, how this uh, turned out, so um, I think that uh, in the next episode we will see how many pieces of diamond we can actually produce out of this one, because I uh, think we'll be able to um, make a Red Bolt uh, discharge every uh, one and a half days, because we are producing uh, so many uh, Red Bolts. Um, and with that, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to uh, create a bunch of uh, diamond. So let's set these refineries with a recipe and uh, yeah, next episode I think that uh, we are going to uh, see this one in action. Now, as for this one, like I said, uh, I have run a little bit of a test. It is possible, although it's not that great. So uh, we set uh, the minimum signal that we could right 10 kilograms that is going to send about 200 kilograms because that's the amount that is going to be in the pipes uh, there is a filler gate over here that's why we are waiting uh, we are waiting on the signal but the amount that we have over here in the pipes will equal about 200 to 300 kilograms of nuclear waste that is going to increase the temperature a little bit but just a little bit and is just for a, a small moment. These tiles reached 50 uh, degrees, but uh, the nuclear waste was always at a uh, relatively uh, te uh, stable temp uh, temperature. So I think it should be okay to run it like this, but uh, I should keep my eyes open anyways, just in case, because if this nuclear waste turns liquid, it is going to be an absolute disaster. Everything in here is going to be filled up with nuclear waste, and we don't want that, because cleaning that up is going to be a pain in the butt. But uh, as for the reactors over here, three are already at maxed 
uh, production. They are, have already the engines tuned up, as we can see. So the um, power that they are producing uh, is already the maximum uh, possible. This one, however, is still a little bit uh, uh, falling behind, but the uh, temperature of the steam is not that great. We have not yet achieved the 200 and 30 degrees that we have on this chamber and I figure that uh, is going to take a little bit of time we probably need to um, fill this up with nuclear waste uh, to have that happen but I'm certain that um, uh, that is not going to be a problem and in here uh, I'm pretty sure that we are gonna take yeah, it's going to take a very long time before this steam chamber is active, but this is the most basic kind of uh, refrigeration chamber, I'm pretty sure this is going to be fine. And uh, we'll, oh, with all of that said, guys, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I've been eager to finish the, uh, to f have this uh, finish, uh, finished off, because as we can see over here, uh, all of my rockets are parked. We are out of diamond, we need diamond ASAP, and now we are... Uh, we are able to produce a good amount of uh, uh, of the stuff, and I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to resume operations. And, uh, well, I am certain that this is going to be a smaller episode than usual. I'm, pre I'm certain uh, that this is going to be the um, new format for the, the series. Uh, we are going to have a, an episode on the weekends. Uh, between uh, Saturdays and Sundays and um, I'm going to try and focus on small objectives to get them done instead of just spreading uh, myself out all over the place having 5,000 different projects running and uh, not being able to finish one of them in, <laughs> in an one episode because uh, that kind of sucks, right? Uh, so, um, with that said, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and that you are enjoying the series so far. If you are, please consider subscribing and help the channel grow. Also, um, if you have time, uh, please consider following me uh, on Twitch. Uh, I've been uh, playing some Space Engineers and I'm quite addicted to that game. So if you have uh, interest, uh, stop by and say hi. I'll be there... Um, at, at random times, I don't know when uh, I have the time to, sp uh, to play that game, but whenever I, I'll have the time, I'll be there. So, um, with all of that said, this is the base manager signing out. Bye-bye. Mm,